Before we dive deeply into this topic, I would like to begin with a few fundamental points. First off, the kidney consists of interstitium, tubules, glomeruli, and blood vessels. And these are the components we look at under the microscope to diagnose and classify the type and severity of rejection. Secondly, you will hear the word BANF. For a detailed explanation, please watch the BANF video at the link provided below. Make sure you watch the video till the end for some high yield pathological images. Starting with acute B cell mediated rejection or ABMR or AMR, this is due to recipients antibodies that are reactive against the specific molecules or antigens in the donor kidney tissue. These antibodies are either present in a very low levels prior to transplantation or are developed de novo after transplant named donor specific antibodies. To diagnose ABMR, the following three criteria must be met. Number one, there must be histological evidence of acute tissue injury. These include glomerulitis and or peritubular capillaritis or PTC, thrombotic microangiopathy or TMA, tubular injury or arthritis with no other identifiable cause. PTC alone does not necessarily mean ABMR. Number two, there must be evidence of antibodies interacting with the vascular endothelium. Examples of histological evidence of this include a positive linear staining of C4D in the peritubular capillaries, in other words, the footprint of complement activation and microvascular inflammation. Remember, in lupus, the C4D deposition is in the glomeruli. Number three, evidence of donor-specific anti-human leukocytic antigen or HLA antibodies or DSAs on blood work. DSAs is quantified by mean fluorescent intensity or MFI. Call it severity if you will. Of note, there is a subset of patients who have histological evidence of rejection and donor-specific antibodies consistent with ABMR but who lack C4D staining. Also, there might be cases with absent HLA antibodies but having positive non-HLA antibodies contributing to the ABMR and need additional testing to detect. The clinical sense plays a role here, hence it's called the art of transplant. Treatment options range from pulse steroids, optimizing immunosuppressive medications, plasma exchange, and various infusions include IVIG, rituximab, or bortezomib, each of those with different mode of action, which I will explain in a separate video. The choice of which ultimately depends on the overall history and clinical picture. Let's train our eyes with some pathology. And by the way, all these images are present in my pocketbook, Transplant Bullets Straight to Your Brain. Here you can see the linear C4D staining of the peritubular capillaries by immunofluorescence. And here is another image showing peritubular capillaritis by hematoxin and eosine, where you can see monocytes, lymphocytes, and neutrophils. And this image shows evidence of glomerulitis by the periodic acid shift stain. And here you can see evidence of TMA or thrombotic microangiopathy. By the way, TMA has many, many, many causes, including CNI, ABMR, and many other causes. And finally, again, evidence of PTC in the first image and another one showing C4D deposition by immunoperoxidase. Thanks, talk soon.